So we've always seen logic components as just little components that help a device think. But did you know that they actually had an additional purpose? If you actually laid out components correctly, they can actually become an element of storage. From today onwards, we're going to take a look at logic components that store state. You're watching episode 8 of Logic Components. Hello and welcome back to Logic Components. Now, all the components we've seen so far, including the encoders, decoders, multiplexers, demultiplexers, all had one thing in common, and that is, whatever input you put in, you can be sure what the output is. In other words, every set of input uniquely maps to every set of output, and that remains invariable for that particular component. Now, however, we introduce a new concept, and that is the component actually hold a state. Your input is actually used to control the state of that component, and the output is dependent on the state. So there's that as a concept. Let's actually take a look at how this can be done. So you might be thinking, well, out of all the components and gates we've seen so far, nothing seems to be able to, you know, hold a piece of data. After all, these are all little devices to actually take in an input, process it, and produce an output. So where does the storage happen? So today what we're going to do is we're going to look at latches, which are the simplest type of state dependent components. And here's the interesting thing. By just intelligently hooking up multiple gates, you can actually get them to hold a piece of data. To illustrate this, we're going to start off by looking at the RS NOR latch. So quite the intimidating name. Well, we're just going to jump in and look at how it works. Now, First thing to point out is, in the previous episodes where we looked at encoders, decoders, multiplexers, and demultiplexers, all these components actually have their own layouts as well in terms of logic gates. I didn't show them to you because I felt it was less important, and I wouldn't be showing this to you either today, if not for the fact that it actually tells you a lot about how latches actually work. So now we jump into our Logisim simulation. This is essentially just two NOR gates with two inputs and two outputs. Right off the bat, notice what's going on here. When I actually toggle the S button, notice how the two outputs actually switch around. Even after the S input has returned to low, the output still remains in its inverted state. To get things back to the way they originally were, I have to actually click on the R button. So okay, what's going on here? An RS NOR latch in fact refers to a set reset latch implemented with NOR gates. The outputs are normally labeled as Q and Q inverted. So what this means is these two outputs always have to be opposites. We take the Q output as the valid correct output and the other one to be its inversion. Every time we issue a set bit to the circuit, what we're saying is we want to set the internal state of this component to true. Notice that the moment I do that, the output for Q becomes true. So we can then infer that the set and reset inputs actually mean setting or clearing the internal state of this actual latch. So how does this work? In fact, if you notice this little bit of wiring here, in fact, what's happening is the outputs are being redirected back into the inputs. In fact, you are storing state by actually creating a feedback loop. It just happens that in this layout, the loop is always stable, but there are things you can do to actually break this and actually start to make this component behave in a way that is, you know, undesirable. And just so we can see this happening, what we're going to do is we're going to actually move on to look at the truth table of this component. Now, it's true that there are two inputs, so technically we should only have four rows. However, now that the state of the device itself actually plays a part as well, we're going to have to actually insert an additional column that actually represents the internal state. And so this is how I'm actually laying out the truth table. Note that there are actually some symbols that we've never seen before. So I'm going to try and explain it. Notice that there is Q and Q+. Now, we've already discussed the significance of the term Q. It simply refers to the current state of the actual latch. Q plus means 
what's going to happen in the next moment, given of course the current state, as well as the S and R inputs. So alright, let's now try to figure out the truth table. Let us start with S and R at 0. Now, if we neither set nor reset at this present moment, what does it mean? Well, it simply means that the latch continues staying at its current state, whatever its current state is. The truth table happens to tell us what the current state is, so in the case of Q being 0, then Q plus will remain as 0, whereas if Q was 1, then it will remain at 1. So that's simple, I hope you're not confused. Let's actually move on to look at what happens when we set and reset. Now, whenever we perform a set operation, no matter what the current state of the latch is, as an output, the state of the latch should be changed to 1. Exact same deal for reset, you can actually disregard the original state. All you have to do is set the final state to 0. So then, this leaves us with an input combination that we've never really discussed, and that is what happens if both inputs were 1. In fact, this is where a problem arises. Formally, if both S and R is 1 at the same time, this is actually an invalid input, and as a result, well, you cannot expect your RS latch to actually perform normally. In fact, if we were to go back to our simulation, if we were to set both R and S to 1, notice now that both Q and Q0 are both 0. So right off the bat, well, your Q inverted is no longer an inversion of Q because they end up both being 0, and that is what we mean by inverted output when things that were meant to go a certain way now no longer works in that particular way. Now we're about to wrap this up, but as a footnote, do notice that this also creates an additional problem. So now let's say we have things in this state. What happens if we were to transition immediately into a 0, 0 input? Now remember the significance of having zeros on both inputs. What this means is basically, your latch retains whatever value was there previously. However, if we were to transition from 1, 1 to 0, 0, what this means is we're telling it to hold on to the invalid state. Now, even in logic sim, it's a little bit hard to do. What you're seeing me do here is I'm actually pausing the simulation so that I can take my time to set both inputs to 0. Now, watch what happens when I resume the simulation. Notice that the simulation actually gets paused immediately, and we get an error that says oscillation apparent. If I were to force the simulation to continue, Notice how the two outputs keep toggling back and forth. In fact, this is what they mean by oscillation. This particular state is not stable, and it keeps jumping to another state, and that state brings you back to this state, and you go back and forth between the two. So alright, we've looked at an RS knowledge so far, we've seen how it works, why it works, and where its limitations are. In fact, that's pretty much enough for you today, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to introduce to you a different RS latch. This one is called the RS NAND latch. To be precise, an RS NAND latch is written with a little bar at the top of the letters R and S. This bar actually stands for an inversion, similar to how I've been using the apostrophe for similar purposes. In fact, for an RS NAND latch, the inputs are what we call active low, meaning that now, to send a set or a reset signal, you have to input a zero on a relevant line, instead of a one. Also note that the outputs are now in the inverted positions. The inverted output is now below, while the actual one is on top. So you can pretty much imagine the RS NAND latch to be just completely opposite to the RS NOR latch. Same goes for the truth table, the invalid condition is now where both inputs are zero. Similarly to the universal gates, all the wiring diagrams for the various latches, as well as the stuff I'm going to continue to cover in the next episode, all these are things that are fixed and you should be able to find on places like Wikipedia and in textbooks. So don't worry too much about having to memorize these diagrams. Anyway, we've covered quite a lot of ground today, so this is a good place to actually wrap up this episode. Thank you very much for watching and until next time, you're watching 0612 TV. Hello, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, remember that I appreciate every like, favorite and comment you give me. If you'd like to see more from me in the future, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. And for more updates outside of YouTube, don't forget to follow me on Twitter at 0612TV. Once again, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.